Okay, uh, at this point, you've probably worked with quadratics and you're quite familiar with taking uh, an uh, a quadratic equation and graphing it. Uh, here are three examples. Um, this one's in vertex form, this one's in standard form, this one's in intercept form. And of course, you could graph it. This is a random quadratic I just drew. And you're able to figure out what the axis of symmetry is, the vertex, the x-intercepts, the y-intercept, and from that standpoint. But what, what happens if, instead of giving, being given the equation and graphing it, you're simply given uh, a couple of points and you have to determine the equation? Um, so what we're going to do in this video is we're going to look at three examples, and we are going to take points that are given to us and construct the equation and uh, from there the graph. Um, as most of you know, uh, you need to have basically three coplanar points to form a quadratic. In this case, notice how we have only two points. And what you see is, if you, let's say you have these two points right here, okay, there's no way to have a unique quadratic because what happens is you can draw this parabola or curve goes through the points, this one goes through the points, this one goes through the points. There's no way to have a unique quadratic with only two points. And similarly, if you're given two intercepts, you have the same um, ambiguity. You have these two intercepts right here, and again, you can draw a point down here. You can draw a line that goes through these points, like this and such. Uh, this is a negative coefficient, so it goes this way. Um, and there's an infinite number of ways to draw that. So having only two points um, is just not enough to create the parabola that you'll need, a unique parabola. Um, the one exception would be if you were given a vertex in one point. Because if you have the vertex, which is right here, you've determined what the axis of symmetry is. And so similarly, you could take, if this point is right here, you can draw, reflect it over the axis of symmetry and have a third point and construct your parabola that way. So if you have a vertex at one point, that works. And of course, if you're given three points, you'll be able to do it as well. So what we're going to do in this video is we're going to take uh, three examples. And when given points or vertex or three points, we are going to express, determine what the equation is that we uh, want to find of the parabola or quadratic. Okay, in this example, we are given a vertex and a point. And as mentioned earlier, you need to have three points. The one exception is if you are given the vertex because you could actually intuitively figure out what the axis of symmetry is and then what, of course, a third point might be. But let's say we have the vertex, we have the point, and basically what the standard strategy is is figure out what the general equation is. And of course, in vertex form, this is what the general equation of a parabola or a quadratic in vertex form. And the first step after you've written the equation is to take the points that you're given and substitute them in because we need to find the a value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take um, the point. The y value is negative 2. And of course, that's equal to a. We need to find a. And then we have x, which is 6 and then minus h, and of course this is h and k for the vertex, so we're going to substitute in 2 for h squared plus the k value, and then we're going to solve to try to find what a is. So this is going to be negative 2 equals, this is 4 squared 16, so this is 16a plus 6, and of course this becomes negative 8, and therefore a is going to be equal to negative one half. So after you've determined what the a value is, we now have ourselves a unique equation, and that is y equals negative one half times x minus the h value plus six and squared. And that's your final solution. Okay, in this example, we're given two intercepts and a point. And of course, as we mentioned before, uh, earlier in the video, when you have two points, or in this case, two intercepts, 
it's not enough information. You have these two right here. And by inserting the third point, that's going to determine what shape the parabola will be. How wide will it be? Will it face up? Will it face down? What sort of stretch they will be? The third point enables you to find the A value in intercept form. So going back to our example, let's find uh, the equation for this quadratic. So again, we have the two intercepts. Uh, this would be the first one, the second one. And again, we go with our standard uh, default, which is just substitute values. So we have our point. So we need, so we're going to plug in negative 12 for y. And then our a value is what we're looking for because that's going to determine the shape ultimately of what the quadratic is. And then we have x, which of course is 3. I should probably substitute 3 in there. And then minus p. p is negative 1. So this is going to be plus 1 times the x value again, 3, minus q, which is 5. And then we're going to solve. So we're going to get negative 12 equals, this is 4 times negative 2 is negative 8, and negative 8a. And therefore, a is equal to 3 halves, okay? which means so our final solution is going to be y equals 3 halves times x minus the first intercept, which is x plus 1, and then x minus the second intercept, which is 5. And this is our solution, and of course we could quickly graph it to verify uh, our answer. If we were to draw um, a quick sketch like this, we have negative 1 is one of the intercepts, and then we have 5 is the other intercept, and the 3 negative 12 is down here, which is a good sign because notice how it faces upward. And our a value, since our a value is positive, it should face upwards. And of course, we could continue to check our answer. If we plugged in 3 and negative 12 into here, we would get um, a solution that works. We would get 4 times negative 17. So we'd get 4 times negative 2, which is negative 8, times 3 halves, which is negative 12. And of course, the intercepts would create 0. Um, and again, and again, we can check our work from there. Now our third example is a quadratic that we are given three points right here and we need to find the equation of the quadratic or the parabola that goes through all three of them. And this kind of trips up a lot of people. Um, but again, if you go back to the default of just simply plugging in points and evaluating, uh, you'll come up with a solution. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take each of these points and we're going to plug it into the standard form of uh, a quadratic. So let's start with the first point. Uh, again, we have 15 equals x squared. If we plugged in negative 2 squared, we get 4. So this is 4a. Negative 2 into x is gives us minus 2b. And then, of course, this is a constant, so it stays c. And we'll do this for the second one. So we get 7 equals 2 squared is 4a again plus 2b plus c. And then our third one, we get 4 and a half equals 1 squared is 1, so that's just a plus 1b plus c. And if you look carefully, what we have here is uh, three linear equations with three unknowns. So all we have to do basically is find out what a, b, c are and plug them in and we have our quadratic through these three points. So, of course, there's three ways offhand uh, that I could think of where you could solve it. You could either first uh, do elimination method and substitution method to find A, B, and C. Or you can take a try an augmented matrix uh, or use some sort of uh, matrix manipulation. And the third way is just use my handy-dandy calculator and plug in all the coefficients and find the solutions to A, B, and C. So, what I'm going to do, uh, this is my little Casio uh, calculator. I go to uh, equations, enter, and we're going to solve simultaneous polynomials, three unknowns, and here are, um, is a matrix. So I'm going to input the coefficients. Okay, I think you can see. Uh, so I put in all the coefficients, and then we hit solve, and our solution is the first value is 1.5, 
the second value is negative 2, and the third value is 5. So a equals 1.5, b equals negative 2, and c equals 5. So again, we go back to our original general equation and put in the coefficients. So we get y equals 1.5, so we're going to say 3 halves x squared minus 2x plus 5. So this is the uh, equation of the quadratic, and of course the nice thing is you can really check this rather easily. You just plug in all three points. So if we took negative 2 and plugged it in, negative 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 halves is 6, 6 plus 4 is 10, 15. So this one works, and if we plugged in 2, 2 squared is 4, 4 times 3 halves is 6, 6 minus 4 is 2, plus 5 is 7. And finally, 1 would be 3 halves, minus 4 halves is minus 1 half, plus 10 halves, 4 and a half. And there you have it. And of course, you can graph it to confirm even further. And that's how you do it.